10 or people can call this number. Dan, should I begin? Yep. Good evening, folks. Uh, this is Attorney Nuresh Gehi, and welcome to this program, Green Card with Gehi. And uh, firstly, thank you so much for the overwhelming response that we are receiving. And uh, uh, people are really kind of uh, giving me topics to speak about. And a lot of them are in connection with employment-based immigration uh, because people have asked me to talk a lot more about employment-based. Over the years, I've spoken so much about complicated cases, including deportations, bad spouses. So now, especially the IT professionals want me to talk about some complicated issues uh, that can arise in uh, you know, uh, employment-based immigration matters. So we are going to continue this whole series of employment-based immigration because we also do a lot of employment-based immigration matters. So the topic for today is issues relating to E2 visas. Then after that, as I promised, all my H1B visa holder friends that we're going to talk about H1B visas today and about the opening of the premium processing. And I know it's quite confusing, so I'm gonna make it as easy as possible for our viewers to understand the procedures involved in the premium processing plan, which has come up from the USCIS. So let's talk slowly. Number one, let's finish the E2 topic up. And this was based upon questions. Mr. Gehi, I was born in a country which is not an E2 member or an E1 member, but I immigrated to a country. And now am I eligible for an E2 visa because I'm a citizen of this new country. So what this person is trying to say, for example, that he was born in a non-treaty trader country like India. So now he's moved to another country like Australia or like Canada or like the United Kingdom. And now this person is a citizen of that country. And now he wants to come to the US on an E1 or E2 visa. Yes, you are absolutely fine because you are a citizen of your new country that is Canada or Australia. So the answer is thus that yes, you should consider the E1 or the E2 category. So E1 is meant for treaty traders, which means you're regularly doing trade with the United States of America. And E2 is for example, you're a person and you've decided to move to America with your family. First thing is check whether your country falls in the list of categories that has a treaty with the United States of America. And if so, if you have money and if you have a business that you have in mind, you can email us at info at gaylaw.com and we'll be happy to assess your situation and let you know if you qualify. The next question was that Mr. Gehi, is it necessary for me to come in and see you right away? The answer is no. Even if you're in Dubai, if you're in Australia, if you're in Canada, email me at info at gaylaw.com we have a Zoom meeting and we get the case started. As simple as that. You don't have to be physically present to get the case started. So at least we can do the background work. And so when you come in, then we can go to step number two. That was the question about E2 visas. Third question was very important. Someone said, what is substantial investment in the E2 visa category? Substantial investment means depending upon the nature of the business, you have enough funds to invest. For example, if you're going to buy a gas station, if you're going to buy a donut store, if you're going to buy like, you know, something like a big gym or something, then you need a lot more money. If you're planning on buying a McDonald's, of course you need half a million. But if you're buying a yoga studio, if you're a martial arts trainer, you may need $25,000, $30,000. So it all depends on your business. If you're starting a computer consulting company, I think you can manage within $50,000 because what you need is to show that you have enough computers, you have basically a space and everything. And of course the business plan, uh, which will be reviewed by the lawyer, that becomes critically important. So don't think that you'll need half a million dollars. Also that is a misnomer. So it all depends upon the nature of the business. And the next question was that Mr. Gehi, I have someone in the US who wants to partner with me, which means uh, they want it to be a joint venture but I'm going to invest uh, you know, into the corporation. Can I do that? The answer is yes. If you buy 51% of the shares of that company, 
you can still come in under the E2 visa category, provided you're going to invest money in that company. So the other question was very important. Does the E1 require, E1 is for the treaty trader. Does that require an investment? The answer is no. You just need to show that you're trading with the United States. Isn't that absolutely brilliant? Consider yourself to be a part of the E1 country like Russia, if you're a part of it, or if you're a part of Albania, if you're a part of Australia, or if you're a part of Sri Lanka, if you're a part of Pakistan, Bangladesh, and if you are doing software exports to the United States, or if you're a garment manufacturer and you're exporting the, to the US, there's a possibility that you may easily settle. So remember the E1 and the E2 are fantastic categories and you just need a good lawyer who can work with you and make sure that uh, you know uh, you do well with that. That's about E1 and E2 visas. And uh, the other question was that Mr. K, what happens to my spouse? Your spouse can also come with you in both these categories. Your spouse can come and one shift she gets the employment authorization documents, which is commonly referred to as the EAD, the good news is that your spouse can also work in the United States. What about children? Children under 21 can come with you. They can go to school, they can go to college, but they are not allowed to work under the E1 or the E2 visa category. So some other questions were, what is the amount of trade that is needed for a treaty trader? More than 50% of your trade should be with the United States. And if not, work with an attorney where you know, we can talk about it and we'll see what your trade is and how you can make it possible by increasing a trade in the US. So that's one way of looking at the problem. Second thing is Mr. Gehi, uh, how long does the E1 or the E2 last? Good news is, first you'll get it for two years, you can extend it for the rest of your life. And in between what you can do, work with a qualified attorney and aim towards a green card if you plan on settling in the United States. And those things are possible. So it's not that it's not possible. Now, one big misnomer is that especially for E1, E2 visa countries, there are people who say that, oh, American immigration is too difficult. Everything in life is difficult. Nothing in life is easy, but fortune favors the brave. When the great get going, the going gets great. If you are that entrepreneur, and if you have that brilliant idea in you, America is the country wherein you can definitely succeed because this country provides you with the opportunity which is needed for growth. This is not provided in a lot of countries. If you look at even Albert Einstein, he was an immigrant. He immigrated to the United States of America. And uh, people don't know much about US history. Great leaders like Alexander Hamilton. Do you know they were immigrants in America? Yes, they were immigrants. This is American history. So it gives you the opportunity that you need. But ultimately, if you have the skill, you have the dedication, if you have the tenacity, you can grow. Someone called me and uh, they told me that I do a lot of uh, uh, you know, software related business with, with America. So one of them told me that uh, you know, I, I handle networks uh, from abroad and you belong to an e-visa country, you can easily settle here if you're really providing a lot of network services to America. So look at how I'm talking about it. If you're providing SEO services, SEO is so common, search engine optimizations. And if you have a big company there, and if you're an E1, E2 member, think about this. So once if you're here, then you can meet with clients, you can grow your business. There's a lot you can do. You're making websites for companies. How easy can this get? And a lot of your clients are in the US. Think about this. You're exporting garments to, to the United States. You're exporting sandals to the United States. You're exporting ties to the United States. You're exporting hair products to the United States. Think about something. Or if not, you want to become an investor. You have this brilliant idea. You're looking at the show in Dubai. And you said that while in Dubai, I've learned all these talents. And right now, the thing is that I want to kind of come over here and I want to make it great in America. Sure, get in touch with us. And we have a lot of clients on the Middle East who talk to us about it. A lot of clients on the UK. 
because a lot of people from the UK want to come in for their children. And if you're in, in the Middle East and if your country is a part of the E1, E2 visa, you want your children to study here, great opportunity. If you're in Dubai, and if you're a citizen of Bangladesh or from Pakistan, or the E1, E2 visa, come over here, your children can come with you too. And all this is possible if you follow the law properly. And at the end of the day, if you go at the book, life will always be great and beautiful for you. So these are legal ways, legal ways of coming to America. And this is something which is an unexplored territory, especially because when you're in all these countries, uh, lawyers come in over there, they try to sell you the investor's visa. Be careful, because you know you need to make sure that you're well-read. You need to make sure that it's not necessary sometime for you to put in the $900,000 down. If you can come in, then after that you'll stabilize over here and your money is with you, it's in your pocket. When you're having those $900,000, you're giving it to somebody else to gamble on your money. And that can be a big gamble for you at times. Only thing is I would explore that if you're from a non e one e 2 country, like India, I can understand that. But if you are from these countries, you need to make sure that you follow the drill carefully. Uh, now let's go on the golden topic today. Yes, H-1B visa holders. I know you're anxiously waiting. So let's basically talk about H-1B visa holders. What has happened so far? I-140 premium processing has started June 1st. So I'm going to go slow because I know these rules are very confusing in immigration. So I'm going to talk in very simple terms like a baby. So number one, I-140 petitions, what should you do? Your labor certification is approved. Now what you can do, immediately go with an attorney who can help you because we've been getting a lot of calls from people whose sperms have been approved because we are still operating. They're calling Mr. Gay, I want to file my I-140 right away. Get in touch with us, info at gaylaw.com. I'm also moving at the side because people told me to move my chair a little bit. So that's what I'm doing here. So info at gaylaw.com or 718-263-5999. Send me your information and I'll make sure that I would be able to help you with the I-140. Now, what's the next thing that is happening? From June 8th onwards, what is immigration going to do? If you are basically a cap exempt, which means if you work for a not-for-profit organization or so, it's going to open up from June 8th. And people whose H-1Bs have been filed, the extensions have been filed, change of status has been filed, they are going to start working on those cases. So let me make this clear. So June 8th, it's going to be cap exempt H-1Bs and uh, uh, including H-1B extensions, H-1B changes of employee and H-1B amendments and all other non-H-1B petitions like the L-1 and O-1 that have been filed. So someone has filed an O-1, someone has filed an L-1. It's already filed before June 8th, then they're going to look into those petitions. First one was for I-140s. Now, second one is for people who've already filed the cases, uh, you know, cap exempt can be filed. And secondly, after that, you're looking at uh, people whose, uh, you know, cases are already in the pipeline, even including l and and visas. Now, June 15th, they're going to start taking H-1B petition that's a con concurrently filed with an I-907. And this is uh, the employee's cap exempt. Uh, so now from the 15th, if you're a new cap exempt person, like, you know, if you're, you're working for a not-for-profit, June 15th, you can file a brand new one, but premium processing. So right now the rule is that you can file it without premium, but John, from June 15th, if you're working for a cap exempt employer, then you can do that. Now, the last category comes for everybody else who's waiting to file a new H1. And this is meant for June 22nd. US plans on resuming premium processing for all other forms, I-129 petitions, including all H-1B cap subject petitions. You're working for a software consulting company. You're working for a doctor. You're working for an architect. You're working for someone. June 22nd is your date to start together with the premium processing. I-129 plus your premium processing can begin together. That is going to be like, you know, something that you need to make sure for both uh, upgrades and for concurrently filed I-907, that is going to be very important. Uh, now these 
dates are subject to change. As a reminder, under the new H-1B registration and filing process, the H-1B filing period lasts until June 30th. So if you were selected in your lottery before June 30th, you have to file it. And of course, before that, you know, your LCA should be approved and everything should be done, then you should be filing it. So for a lot of people, June 22nd will be an important date. I do understand that. And before that, those people like who have filed and everything, June 15th is an important date. June 8th, I call it as the catch up date for people who've already filed. And uh, right now for people who actually are about to finish their six years, or they're about to get out of status, they should consider that the I-140 premium processing. And if your category is current, if you want to file, just make sure that if your category is current under the visa bulletin, then you need to file for I-140 with premium processing and the adjustment application. And that can take you a long way. So I think that we've covered enough ground about H-1B visa holders. We've talked about E-1 and E-2s. Now, next week, we are going to have a full show about H-1B for H-1B visa holders, especially what is change of status, what is an H-1B amendment, what is a new employer, and exactly layoffs. But that's a big show. That's going to be a biggie. So all your H-1B friends can basically, you know, look into that. We are also going to cover a little bit about the E-1, EB-1 and the EB-2 categories for countries such as India and China. Why is it so important for them to have a backup plan, especially when your employer is not ready to file for you? How can you still sponsor yourself for the green card? And why is that so important? That is going to be what we all are going to talk about. So now, hello, sir, when you have a moment, please talk about Canadian citizen with ID background want to reside in US. Yes, if you're a Canadian citizen and uh, if you have an ID background, then there are a couple, thing, a couple of things you can do is what you can actually do. You can consider the E1 or the E2 visa if you want to start your own business. Or in the meanwhile, if you have a very good degree, a master's degree, then you can also consider the TN visa. So we are also going to cover the TN visa shortly for a lot of people. So number one, if you're an entrepreneur, consider the E1 or the E2, depending on your situation. So email me at info at gayilaw.com so that I can look into your resume and I can also advise you what should be a proper route for you today. So that's exactly what uh, you know today's show. So we covered about H-1Bs. We're going to just sum it up again. I-140 petitions have started from June 1st. June 8th, it's catch up time for people who already filed so they can actually begin the premium processing. And for uh, cap, uh, uh, caps, uh, for those who fall under the cap, uh, basically like you know not-for-profits and all, they can uh, continue filing and upgrading the petitions. And then after that, from June 15th, a uh, new 501c3 is not for profits can file. June 22nd is the real date for the rest of the gang to continue filing. So I hope uh, I've covered enough. So I know it's a little complicated, but even for me, it becomes complicated because the whole immigration system is convoluted. <laughs> it becomes difficult for everybody to understand sometimes. But I try my best to make it as simple as possible for my viewers. So the floor will be opened up for questions and let's start taking questions. So any questions, folks? Hey, Gary, there are a lot of E2 questions. So if you can explain about E2. Yes. So about the E2 visa, as I mentioned, is number one is, uh, let's take it, this example. What you spoke about right now is about a person who's, a, who's in Canada and also, please include about management consultant. Yes, management consultant uh, can be under the TN if possible. And I believe, yes, you can go for a TN visa if you're a management consultant. But honestly, you know why I like the E1 and the E2? Because it gives you the ability to grow. If you're working under the TN for an employer, you have the salary limitation. But under the E2 visa, you don't have that salary limitation. You form your company. Invest in that company a little bit. And if you're a management consultant, you don't need a lot of money there in order to put it in. And then after that, you have a contract directly with people and you'll make four times more money than what you'll make under the TN visa category. It's all about how you think and how well you're legally guided after basically a lawyer hears about your, your issues and everything. So, 
Okay, so now let's basically talk about, you know, I would prefer people can just ask me questions on the show live because that makes life easy for everyone. Sharata Kumar, Sharat Kumar. Yes, your question, please. Yes, Sharat. Yeah, uh, can you hear me, Gaheji? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, I just want to know what is the status of jobs now? Can we, can we... Uh, what is your educational background, Sharat? I am an MBA uh, graduate and uh, have a rich experience in automobile, real estate and uh, IT. So then what do you have to do? You need to find an H-1B sponsor. And if you find a sponsor, they can still sponsor you for the H-1B visa. But H-1s are not being given now, no, from India? Yeah, but you need to plan now for next year because it takes time. But, you know, by the time you look for an employer, because things are again going to begin in April. So what happens is that, you know, this is the best time for you to start looking at that. And okay. other than that, I believe like unless and until if you don't have a PhD, if you don't have some superior qualifications, then it becomes difficult for you to come. And if you're a PhD, if you have publications, that's the other way for you to look into. And third, of course, okay. everyone knows. Okay, thank you, Gage. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, can I, uh, yes, Nishal, how are you? How are you, sir? Good to talk to you again, sir. Good, 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 Nishal. Sir, quick question. I, I know we discussed partially last time, but uh, just an idea. How much is the minimum investment required for an E2, sir, if I may ask? It depends, as I said, upon the nature of your feet and everything. It's like, you know, very subjective question. Back on. Okay. What's okay, sir. Okay, fair Downloading. enough. Okay. So it depends on the nature of the field you're into. And, you know, as I said, for a yoga teacher, you may just need $30,000, 30000 You know, if you're buying a restaurant, you're looking at 200000 so it's a very subjective issue. And, uh, you know, that's why things are made possible. So uh, the good thing is that you don't have to worry that you need a lot of money. It all depends on the nature of the business. You are in. And so if you're a martial arts instructor, you need $25,000. Uh, just, just to ask, sir, and, and I will definitely get a consultation formally like we discussed. But my question was, sir, I have a cricket equipment uh, business here in yes. Canada, as you're familiar. You're so, looking at around fifty or $60,000 a year. Okay, that's what. I, so basically, that investment is for my taking up a shop there. My inventory is that. Is that what the investment is? Yeah. For? Uh, as I said, we'll have to get into details. But as I said, I mean, you cannot quote me on that. But Absolutely. this is my analysis. This is an approximate number. But uh, that's why the client works out with the lawyer because okay. you'll be the best judge to tell me how many, for example, balls you need, how many bats you need, how many stumps you need. All those things are actually calculated, and the numbers given on that yeah. basis and everything. And you're so lucky that cricket is becoming very big in the United States. It and you'll be surprised fact, if you come to yeah. New York, uh, yeah. in summer you'll see a lot of people playing cricket these days. Even in Americans fact, are getting into cricket. I do ship a lot to the U.S., but as I mentioned, it's not it's not substantial like you mentioned. That was my only concern. We can basically talk about that. And sure. you know, also the other thing what you can do, sure. uh, you know, you, you can also add some other goods. To your inventory and you know you can go to take it to the next level i appreciate the guidance thank you, thank again. you so much. yes thanks. thanks so if there are any more questions uh karisha hello karisha do you have a question hello yeah yeah i have a question are you hearing me yes please i got married on march 13, March 13, 2020. And I sent in the I-130 form, a stand alone, but it's, I, I haven't get it back as approval yet. And I'm thinking, can I apply for my work permit or do I have to wait until the approval of the standalone I-130? Okay, firstly, number back. one is that, do you have a lawyer? No, I don't have a lawyer. Okay, it's good for you to take a lawyer I in call, these cases. I call the office at 175. Okay, do me a favor. Give me your number and I will call you. What's your phone number? 646. Yes. 945-0484. I'll call you tomorrow and we'll talk personally, Karisha. Okay. Okay, I'll call you for sure. Yeah, I live at 175. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to call you 100%. I'll call you. I'll call you tomorrow. Yes, Ali, how are you? Um, uh, yes, I'm fine. Uh, uh, thank you for taking my call. So I have a construction business here in Pakistan. So uh, 
I want to move to USA. Uh, what route should I apply? Should I uh, get a? You're business, lucky. Uh, you need to look into the E1 or the E2, and uh, you know, yeah. get in touch with me on info@gaylaw.com. And uh, at, if you have a decent business and if you're paying your taxes properly, and if everything is by the book, then we can look into that for sure. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I'll I'll get in, get into. But they just want to see that people have a genuine business, and after that, they have you know enough money, and uh, basically they are entrepreneurs. And if you fall have those three qualities in you, then I'd love to work with you, Ali. All right, that's uh, Thank that's you good. for being uh, up so late in the night. <laughs> and I appreciate yeah. it, Ali. And I think, uh, please email me info at gaylaw.com and then we'll be on Zoom, we can talk from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, yeah. So folks, as you can see, now we have Vishal. Vishal has a question. Uh, hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, good evening, Vishal. How are you? Where okay. are you calling from? I'm calling from Toronto. Uh, I'm a Canadian citizen. Yes, uh, Vishal. Yeah, uh, basically I'm working here uh, for a multinational organization in sales and marketing. The question is about my wife. She has a bachelor's degree in computer science engineering and uh, five years IT experience. I know you mentioned about E1, E2. Uh, is it okay to go with a job offer on TN and later on convert to E2? when? Yes, you can. Uh, I've done that before. Okay, because we have a scope to open a consultancy in IT. This is what I've done for a lot of IT companies. And, uh, you know, you'll need guidance. This is a very good possibility and yeah. should be a problem. I don't see it to be a big issue. Okay, so in that case, how what documents or how can I be? Email me, info at gaylaw.com. Yeah. And just give me all your details when you send a detailed email with your resumes. Right. And then, and also make sure that your phone number is there and I'd be happy to talk to you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. So these are interesting questions as you all can see that these doors are opening up. So we have Faisal with a question now. Good evening, Faisal. Hello. Can yes, I can hear you now, Faisal. Where are you yeah. calling from? I'm from North Carolina. Yes, I'm Faisal. I'm to uh, ask you a question about my parents. They uh -huh. are in Pakistan. They are doing uh, some kind of same business as my brother asked a question a minute before. Uh, yes. He's, he's into a construction business. Right. So, And uh, I have my other brothers as well in Pakistan. There are a couple of them. So looking for bring them over here. What is the route on E1, E2 and how much money we have to invest on it? So it depends on, uh, that's why I told your brother, once if he sends me his resume, then I can start talking to him, um, depends on what he wants to do. And, uh, you know, then we'll have to take it from there. But I also want to know what work is done in Pakistan and what kind of basically, you know, uh, business does he have, whether he's constructing buildings or whether he's into basically houses and everything. So immigration gets into details of those things. So I'll have to okay. have like a conversation with them and then we can figure out the investment. Okay, just an idea, just an idea, like at least minimum figure. If, is he a, okay, is he an architect? Is he an engineer? What is his background? No, he was a banker, but now he's, he turned out to be a construction. In construction. So what is he constructing in Pakistan right now? Like, is he kind of renovating flats or is he making buildings? Renovate, no, he's great, building a new flat. Okay, so you'll need close to around 100,000 or 150,000 somewhere there. Okay, minimum right. 100,000. Can be, can be a little less, but I'll have to really talk to him, but somewhere there, around 150, somewhere there you're looking at. Okay, so uh, one more question. If my parents apply, for my dad apply, so does it cover my other brothers also? No, over, they are, no. no. I, as I mentioned, it has to be children under 21. Okay, okay. All right, thank you so much, yeah. So folks, uh, subjective questions, that's very difficult to answer, particularly because I'll have to at least read a little more about your case and you know, let you know, because it's impossible for anyone to just you know, answer from the back of the head without actually looking at the specifics. Because when you are going to apply for your case before immigration, they're going to look at specifics. So if there are any, any other questions, and there are two participants who've raised their hand. Yes, uh, Mohammed, your question, please. Good evening, Mama. Can you hear me? Can you hear Hello? Me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, Mama. Okay. I just want to, I have a question. I 
green card interview on la last year, but uh, still pending, no result yet. Uh, how long it will take or something? Okay, so when did you file? Uh, under what category and who filed for it's, you? Uh, my, my wife filed for me. And is she an American citizen? Yeah, yeah, she's an American citizen. Were you interviewed? Uh, yes. Okay, so either you need, uh, by now they should have given it to you, but what we can do, we can expedite this. If you want, if you're in a rush, we can take it to federal court and get an answer within six months for you. Okay, now because- so you can uh, email me. Okay. Or you can call me and uh, this can be rushed if needed. No, because uh, I think uh, the case is in, in your office. And yeah, as I said, we can rush it at the stage after COVID opens. Okay, okay, then. So, but uh, until COVID, we cannot do a whole lot, but then we can start rushing it from the moment. I know you very well. Okay. So, but until then, another thing which uh, I would prefer, just keep uh, everything calm right now. And uh, just to send you on uh, line, I want to let you know a few things. Uh, I'm sure you know that New York is very badly affected, as you know, Mohammed. Yes, yes. So the thing is that if we are living in New York, you're looking at at least six months somewhere there. Uh, because what is happening is that I was just reading some news. Uh, unfortunately, the recent news is they are going to cut down a lot of USCIS officers. I hope that doesn't happen. Because if that happens, then we are looking at a bigger backlog. But there's nothing for you to worry about. If everything is good, this is normal for you at this stage. Okay, thank you. Hope you're doing well. It's always wonderful speaking to you, Mr. Ratan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, God bless. Yes. So next question from Jimmy. Hello? Hello? Jimmy, do you have a question? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. So uh, uh, can you please answer how long it takes to get a green card once you've applied for E2? Okay, which country are you from? Uh, well, I am from India. All right, and you're a Canadian citizen? Uh, I'm planning to be one, yeah. I'm soon gonna be. Okay, first thing is, once you become a Canadian citizen first, you'll have to get on your knee too. And if you're going to apply for a green card through India, unfortunately for that, you'll have to wait for at least seven to eight years. But the good news is that if you're an E1 or an E2, that's what we do then after that you can continue and we can kind of make sure that somehow or the other, but you're looking at an eight year time. Eight year time, yeah, once okay. I get, you know, once I file yeah, through Canada, right? Yes, after you become, okay. a, it's, it's going to be a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and, and does the whole family, E2, does the whole family get the green card or just the primary applicant? E2 is not, even or E2 is not a green card. It gives you the right to live and work in America. Mm -hmm. It's a work visa. Then for the green card, that's a different procedure. Oh, so that's not like there's no clear path to green card. You have to like. Yes, but most people prefer this because this can be indefinitely extended. The E1, E2. Okay, and there are no like uh, um, catches like uh, H1B, right? That it, it can. No, get... it's much easier than the H1B. Luckily, so far so good. <laughs> Let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> So that's what we've done a lot of these cases, because that's what people like. And we have a lot of plans on Canada. We have people you know, from uh, the UK, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, uh, because we try to come up with the easiest possible way when people can succeed. But definitely they're looking at people who are qualified, people who are genuine, who can really do business, and people who are here to make a difference in the economy. They're not looking at people who just are trying to come to America. So yeah, you should have something with you when you come to this country. Yeah, that's correct. And, uh, and I'm, uh, very, I'm a straight shooter on my shows. I make it very clear that if you think you are something or an entrepreneur, then contact me. But if you're just someone who wants to waste your money and you don't have anything, don't come to me straight. I won't even take up the case. <laughs> I, I really appreciate your uh, uh, straightforward um, answer. You, on we that. are a big firm and we try to help everyone as much as we can. Yeah. Of course, I'm not 100%. But you know, no lawyer can be, but at least I'm open and I have to let you know the truth. Yes, yes, that's that's well, very, I you. really appreciate that. Thank so I have so one more question. So once sure. I start my, uh, uh, say, E2, uh, uh, how much, uh, I know this question came up, but then what should be the range that I'm, I'm not yet sure how much, I, what should be the range of investment that I should As I said, again, I just mentioned that earlier, it depends on the persons we can be in touch with us via email. 
and we can work that out. First, become a Canadian citizen, then talk to me about it for sure. That, that's great. All right. Okay. Thank now, you. So that'll much. help a lot, Jimmy, to you. Thank you so much for your question. And uh, any other questions, folks? So thank you to everybody. And remember, next week, we are going to talk about some very interesting issues about filing of new H-1Bs, H-1B transfers, H-1B amendments, H-1B change of status to H-1B, as well as people who have been laid off, as well as the premium processing. Everything you need to know about the H-1B visa, it's going to be very important. And uh, if you're an IT professional, just make sure that you share the link. And that's going to be an open forum on H-1B visas. So everything you need to know about the H-1B visa and premium processing is the name of the show for next week. Next week, Monday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Attorney Gehi, the instant program constitutes an attorney advertisement under the laws of the state of New York. Prior results do not guarantee future outcome. And the information given in this webinar is general in nature and does not apply to any particular facts or circumstances unless and until an attorney-client relationship is established under the law. We handle immigration cases from all over the United States and the world. And if you have any questions, you may reach us at info at gehilaw.com or call us at 718-263-5999. The easy way to get a faster response is info at gehilaw.com. Thank you.